Hey! In Angular, we often need our child component to emit notifications to its parent component. In the child component, the user enters a value, clicks a button, or completes an operation, and the parent component wants notification of these actions. Previously, we've used output properties for these notifications. Starting in Angular version 17.3, we now have a new output API as an alternative to output properties. Note that the new output is not a signal. So why did the Angular team define a new output API as part of its signalification of Angular? For API consistency, an input property looks like this. The new signal input looks like this. If you aren't familiar with the new signal input, check out my video, Angular's New Signal Inputs. That video is linked above and in this video's notes. The output property looks like this. For consistency, the new output API looks like this, matching the syntax of the new signal input. In this video, we examine the new output API and outline its benefits. I'm using StackBlitz and a similar application we used for signal inputs. I've simplified it a bit. In this application, we only have two components, the parent component that displays a list of snacks and the child component that allows for entry of criteria to filter the list. Here is the child filter component. The template uses two-way binding to set the user entered text into the filter property. And it has a button so the user can indicate when they are ready to filter the list. The parent snack component template displays the child filter component and the list of snacks. The parent component code calls a service to get the list of snacks, and it defines a signal to hold the list filter. Since the list filter is a signal, we use a computed signal to filter the list of snacks every time the list filter signal changes. Notice, however, that the filter doesn't work. We need a way to notify the parent component every time the user clicks the filter button, and we need to pass the filter by value to the parent component. Looking at the filter component, our task then is to emit a notification event every time the user clicks the filter button, and we need that notification to include the current filter by value. Prior to Angular version 17.3, we'd use an output property. An output property can emit a notification from a child component to its parent. Let's do that first, get it working, and then shift to the new output API. Scrolling up, add output parentheses, and we'll call the output event process filter equals new event emitter parentheses. If we just want to send a notification without any data, that would be enough. But for our case, we want to pass along the filter by value, which is a string, so we'll set the generic argument to string. Next, when the user clicks the filter button, we want to emit that event. In the template, the button click event is already bound to the onClick method here. So when the user clicks the button, the onClick method is called. In that method, we call this dot process filter dot emit. And we emit the value currently set in the filter by box. This dot filter. Now our child component emits this process filter event every time the user clicks the filter button. Remember the name of this event. We'll use it in a moment. Our next task is then to listen for that event in the parent component and react to it, filtering the list of snacks. Looking at the parent template, here is the directive for the child component. We use event binding to bind to the process filter event. We'll bind to a method in the parent. Let's call that method filter list. Since the child component is passing a value with that event, we specify dollar $event here. We see an error because we don't yet have a filter list method in the parent component. Let's add that next. In the parent component, we'll add a filter list method. We are expecting to get the user entered filter by value, so we'll define an argument I'll call filter text of type string. What do we want this method to do? 
we needed to set the list filter signal so the computed signal recalculates and filters the list. We call this dot list filter dot set and pass in the value provided by the child component. Filter text. That's it. Let's try it out. I'll type nut and click the filter button. Now we only see snacks that contain the entered filtered value. Let's try another one. I'll type corn and click filter. It works! So every time the user clicks the filter button in the child component, it sends a notification with the current filter by value. The parent template uses event binding to call a method when that event occurs. And the parent component has code in that method to react to that notification and set the filter signal. The computed signal is then re-executed and the list is filtered. How does this code change if we use the new output API? Going back to the child component, the changes are minimal. We replace the output property. I'll comment it out so we can still see it. We instead call the output function. Process filter equals output parentheses. We then use the generic argument to specify that we'll pass a string value with the event notification. Trying it out, I'll type nut and click filter. And it still works. That was painless. One of the key differences between the old output property and the new output API is the event type. Instead of an event emitter, which is based on RxJS, the new event type is output emitter ref which does not depend on RxJS. Since the new event type also supports an emit method, we don't have to change anything else. As with the signal input, we can alias the output variable. With an alias, we expose a more detailed or user-friendly name for the parent component to use, but then to find a shorter or more technical name for use in the child component code. The output function provides an argument for options. We type curly braces, alias, colon, and the alias name. Let's call it filtered change. Now in the parent snack template, we change the binding to the alias name, filter change. Trying it out, I'll type nut and click filter. The code still works. But wouldn't it be better if the list filtered as the user typed instead of entering a value and clicking a button? Yep. Let's go back to the child component. We'll change the filter here from a string to a signal that holds a string. And we need to modify the reference here to open the box and read the signal. Since we now have a signal, we can use an effect to emit the notification. Filter EFF equals effect parentheses. Inside the effect, we define an arrow function. It takes no arguments. And we can copy the emit code from the onClick method into this effect. We no longer need the filter button, so let's delete it. And we can delete the onClick method. Now, when the user types into the filter by box, the filter signal changes, the effect is executed, and the current filter by value emits to the parent component. Let's try it. Notice as I type that the list is immediately filtered. That looks better. So why change from an output property to the new output API? One of the key reasons is API consistency. The new output API is consistent with the new signal input syntax. Some additional reasons to use the new output API? The new API is simpler and it's more type safe. The event emitter used with the output property did not guarantee type safety. If you'd like to see this example using model input instead with its two-way binding, check out my video, Angular's New Model Inputs, linked above and in this video's notes. Consider changing your output properties to the new output API or the new model input. Then use the comments to tell me how it went and what you think of the change. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.